The components of the Earth's climate system can be divided into one of four major Earth's subsystems, the lithosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere. The lithosphere contains the elements that make up the Earth's crust as well as the upper solid part of the mantle. The biosphere is all living organisms. The hydrosphere is all water on Earth. Almost all of Earth's water is in the oceans and is salty. Less than 3% is fresh and most of this is tied up in ice. Some people split frozen water from the hydrosphere and refer to it as the cryosphere. The atmosphere is the gaseous layer around the Earth, which is comprised of 78% nitrogen gas, 21% oxygen, and less than 1% argon, as well as many important trace gases, including carbon dioxide. The spheres are also highly interconnected. An event in one sphere often affects the other spheres. For example, increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has led to acidification of oceans. The sun is the main source of energy to the earth. Because all of the spheres meet at the surface of the earth, the surface energy balance is a key determinant of climate from local to global scales. As this image shows, energy and matter flow between spheres through many processes that create a complex web of connections between the spheres. Because of the cycles and complex web of interactions, the global climate system is also complex and can respond non-linearly to forcings. A forcing is anything that kicks or shifts the climate into a different state. Although this course is focused on human-caused climate change, it is important to recognize that the Earth's climate has changed throughout its 4.6 billion years history. Earth scientists have divided Earth history based on major events recorded in the fossil record. The leftmost panel shows the two main divisions of the entire 4.6 billion year history, the Precambrian and the Phanerozoic. These two events are differentiated by the appearance of multicellular life at the start of the Phanerozoic, about 550 million years ago. The middle panel shows the divisions of the Phanerozoic. The most recent period of the Phanerozoic is the tertiary, which began about 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs disappeared. The last panel shows the divisions of the tertiary. The most recent period is the quaternary, which began about 2.5 million years ago. The onset of the Quaternary is marked by both a change in climate to cooler ice ages and the first appearance of hominids. The Quaternary has traditionally been split into the Pleistocene and the Holocene. The Holocene is the most recent interglacial period and began about 10,000 years ago. If all of Earth history could be fit into a year, Homo sapiens would first appear at 1136 on December 31st. Despite our recent appearance on Earth, we have dramatically changed the planet. The Anthropocene is a term used to describe the significant influence of human activities on Earth. The next few slides illustrate some of these changes. Most scientists put the start of the Anthropocene in the 1950s. These two images, all taken from space, provide examples of how humans have altered the lithosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. The first image is from Brazil, showing the removal of Amazonian rainforest. During the 1900s, approximately 20,000 kilometers squared were lost per year. Now, about 5,000 kilometers squared per year are being lost. This is due to aggressive policies put in place to protect the forest. The next image was taken by Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield and shows circular irrigation and farming along a river in a dry part of South Africa. River systems around the world have been altered to provide water for irrigation, changing the spatial distribution of water around the world. Use these images to think about and describe how humans have altered Earth's four spheres and its climate system. This map shows how much of the Earth's land surface we have modified by clearing forests, removing rock, and building cities. Where can you find the last remnants of Earth's wilderness? 
Despite being wild, how do you think these areas are being affected by humans? As I already mentioned, humans have also altered Earth's hydrology, diverting and damming rivers. This series of maps shows the additions of dams and reservoirs from 1850 to 2000 in the U.S. Today, the U.S. has almost no unmodified river systems left. Think about the changes illustrated here and in the previous slides. How could they alter the Earth's climate? Also notable is the speed at which humans have altered the planet. Some have referred to this speed as catastrophic. This is well illustrated by the changing landscape near Dubai, a city in the United Arab Emirates, where man-made islands in the shape of palm trees in the globe have been constructed in less than 10 years. More images illustrating the Anthropocene can be found at the link on the following slide. 